Okay, so four district candidates. The school system has many fine schools that we can be proud of, no doubt. How would you replicate the success we have seen in those schools that are clearly not doing as well? What we need to do um, is look at look at the good, the, the successful schools in Richmond public schools and expand, replicate, add middle school grade levels where we can. I think a good example of this is the IB program at Lucille Brown. Lucille Brown had 75 spots this year, and there were 300 applicants. Um, to run an IB program costs $100,000 a year. So we need to expand this program, make it accessible to more students. We need to ensure that students who are in this school have real access to these classes as well. Um, to have a, a program co-located within a school often creates an environment of the haves and have-nots, and I don't think that's healthy for our children, especially on the middle school level. Um, I would also support, um, we, have, we have a lot of small, successful schools in Richmond where you have to academically qualify to get in. Um, I think access is really limited and that we're missing a whole group of children who are in the middle. And I say that as a mother who has a child who is there. And I'm extremely concerned about middle schools. So we need to replicate some of these successful programs and make sure they, that you don't have to academically qualify to get into them. Um, we need to provide transportation so that any student living in any part of the city can have access to a school that meets the needs of, of that child. I've been sitting a very long time, so I'm going to stand up on this one. Um, replication sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't, because a lot depends on the personalities and skills of people involved in a particular school. And, and studies have shown that I, I, school districts have replicated programs from other school districts because it was successful there, and then they, don't want, they wonder why it wasn't successful in the new school district that adopted it. I'm going to talk about something that I think really does work. Uh, I think we have to look at restructuring. I think we have to look at the way we teach students. Uh, I think we have to look at things like themed schools, magnet schools. I thought about on the high school level. Uh, we have many students who just love sports. Why don't we have a sports academy, a school where students learn through that venue? Where, where we're preparing kids so they can compete nationally and internationally, and eventually maybe some of them make it to the Olympics. These are the kinds of ideas we need to think about that interest kids and want them to move forward. Uh, why don't we have a school of the arts? We've got a, that wonderful choir uh, over at Armstrong. We talked about that graduation rate. They've got the best choir in the city. They travel in Europe and everything else. We need to change the way we address education. Let the students decide where they're going. Why don't we have, uh, instead of declining enrollment at Richmond Technical Center, why don't we have that as a standalone school that teaches the very latest technologies, partners with business, and everything else? It's not a matter. I don't think replication necessarily works that well that often. I think we have to spawn some new ideas based on the interests of the students. Restructure the schools, go to K6, K8 uh, if necessary, and whatever else we need to do. I think we need to have a very broad discussion on this. Okay, thank you. Um, replicating successful programs. Um, IB is a very popular program. Um, in Richmond Community High School is a successful high school, and I, there are elementary schools that have um, many enrichment programs within their schools. Um, I think that, I, I'm thinking about a new program, the, the um, Renaissance Middle, Middle School program, and that's a new program and it's gonna count on um, the implementation by the teachers, and the, well the principal and the teachers, and 
So we need to have a strong principal. Um, um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, when I think of hands-on learning and, and using the environment, and I think the tests, just the SOLs, just often dictate how a day goes in the life of a teacher and, and whether or not they can take advantage of some of these um, programs. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to talk quick because I've got, I've got to talk about that other issue. About the anti-bullying, uh, I have a, a, a platform on my website, richforrichmond.com, which I work with uh, Equality Virginia to develop a comprehensive anti-bullying policy. And, and the one thing that I did not hear that we definitely have to identify when we're talking about anti-bullying, especially in the 21st century, is social media. And here at a college campus, I don't, you know, the social media bullying that happens in middle schools, you know, it starts in middle schools. Not only do we have to train our teachers to identify, you know, what's going on in front of them, but they also have to look for warning signs when there may be problems uh, beneath the surface because, you know, we all read the horrible stories about, you know, young people taking their own lives. I mean, it's, a, it's serious, a serious business when it comes to social media bullying. All right, when you look at trying to replicate a program, what I try to do is you look at the common denominators that what makes them successful. So if you look at, like, for example, Chan, <laughs> Chad Hornick at TJ, who's, who's redone the football program there. Like they mentioned, the choir director at Armstrong or the special needs program at Munford. What you have in common is you have strong leaders and an engaged communities. So what, what I want to do as a school board member, and I've experienced too, that the, the central... We've talked about central uh, administration having too much power. What we have to do is find and encourage leaders, work to engage our communities, because in every success story that we do have in the city, those are the common denominators. And that's what I'm going to work on, regardless of what program we want to replicate. And that's, that's what is, is especially important uh, uh, to me to, to uh, achieve uh, that. So. <coughs> Uh, it's interesting that that question would say replicate success in some schools that are less successful. And uh, I have to look at the education of my children who were in Southampton. And my son started out in a K through second grade schoolroom that had children in uh, kindergarten, first and second grade, and they were all learning at their level and at their speed, but they were learning in a different way than the rest of um, some of the other schools who had separate classrooms. And I thought that was very innovative. And they took that program away. But it was very successful for the students who went through that. Um, IB program, I remember we were, uh, some of my uh, neighbors who wanted their children in the IB program, and at that time, I think it was only 50 slots, right, Mary, 50 slots, or, and it was like, you've got 300 people or more who want to get in here, expand the program, find space to put them in. But also, you've got to have uh, the parents' input. What do the parents see would be successful for, to, some, for their children? And we can say, oh, yes, we can put it over there, we can put it over there. Is it the right place to put it? And do you have the principals and teachers who are trained in those areas to make it successful? So it, it's easy to say, yes, let's replicate it if it's being successful, but there's more to it than that. You've got to look at where it's being replicated, the space, and who do you have trained, and who is uh, going to provide the leadership to make it successful in those less successful schools. And it may be just a part of the program that needs to be replicated at the school. And let's try some, um, uh, let's look at some trials, some uh, pilot programs, and see how successful we can make that and then move it on to other places. Thank you. Oh, did you finish? I always like to put a plug in for restructuring the school year, year-round schools. Okay. <laughs> Yes, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just saw a ball of hope? I <laughs>